So what are we doing? So are, are, are you an Apple user? I am. Oh, ah! <laughs> they have uh, me. See, um, do we want to play with Darn? <laughs> what? You said they want to play with Darn. Um, this this is this is this is going to be an Inyendo Bingo podcast. In your endo. Welcome. After after this episode, <laughs> it's the new thing. But you're gonna play a song or what? You wanna shut up? <laughs> Let's get under the show. Let's do it. Discover music and I. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to episode six of the Discover Music NIE podcast. My name is Corky, as you know. With me is my co-host, Kendo. Kendo, how are you? I'm good. Good evening. What's the crack? All good, all good. Do you know what I realized when I introduced, not the last episode, the one before that, I called you my co-host and not my co-host? Whoops. Sorry, we'll let it slide. Thanks. I appreciate that. You, you settling into your new surroundings? Settling into my new surroundings. The wardrobe's gone. It's See that? In the hallway. Almost yeah, blocking my stairs. I almost can't go downstairs. You, you did Snapchat me earlier to show me your mess. That is true. But it's, mo- well, it has to go in the other yeah. room. You haven't really got rid of the problem. You've just moved it. <laughs> that was the plan all along. <laughs> but that's okay. Right. Right. Tonight, we're going to hear some cracking music. Uh, as per usual, as per usual, we're going to have some music from Sugar Wolf, from Mob Wife, and our special guest tonight is Darren Doherty. Oh, um, he ha- he works under a couple of guys, so he's going to be talking a bit about that later on. So, yeah, looking forward to that big time. Um, so, you want to get the, the first track on their way there, Corks? Yes, uh, we will start off with uh, Sugar Wolf. This is called Changes. It's crazy.
So we just played you Changes by Sugar Wolf. Um, we've got another track lined up for you here now um, from a young fella who got in contact with us, asked us to play his uh, latest single. It's his first single that he's written and recorded. Um, this is Will You Stay Tonight by Charlie Hanlon. Great song, Kendo. I really enjoyed that one by Young Charlie Hanlon. Yeah, great track there. Um, very catchy tune now. Um, hard to believe that's his first his first single. Um, down, a Down Patrick native, sixteen years of age. That's unbelievable. That is. So uh, I mean, that, that's that's a catchy song. It's got good hooks on it. And if he's putting that out already, that's his first song. You know, he's, he's only sixteen years old. It's only going to get better. And I'm very excited yeah. to hear in like ten years' time what he's coming out with. Absolutely. Be following in Ash's uh, footsteps in no time there, coming uh, from the, the Down Patrick part of the world there. Who's Ash? Never heard of them. Never heard of them. <laughs> I've only seen them about a dozen or more times. Is that all? Oh, just, uh, just, just about the one dozen now. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, no, great, great song again. So it is, um, say we're looking forward to playing some more of him as well soon, hopefully. Um, but yes, uh, next up then we have our special guest, uh, join us this evening. Kendall, would you like to introduce him? 
I will indeed. We have a fella coming in from Straban, County Tyrone, and his Another name is North Darren West. Doherty. Pardon? Another from the Northwest. I was trying to slip that in silently. Uh, didn't work. No. You put me off instead. Sorry. So we have Darren Doherty uh, from Straban, and he is involved with a couple of musical projects, so he's going to be chatting to us about those, so we look forward to hearing from, from him now. Without further ado, let's bring him in. Uh, welcome, Darren Doherty, to uh, Discover Music NI podcast. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you Thanks very much, guys. Us. Pleasure having you. Thanks for being a part. So uh, we'll kick off. A um, bit, of, bit of background with your, your music career, how it started. Um, how long have you been playing instruments? What instruments are you playing? That, that kind of thing. You give us an idea of what's, what's what. Cool. No worries. Um, <clears throat> I'm a long time uh i'm at this now let's say um so i actually started um playing guitar and singing in bands when i was 11 um with uh a few local musicians that are quite well known as well uh we should be peter doherty and uh, uh mark donnelly and um another fella called corky breslin and um oh, indeed, yeah. absolutely and uh you know so and we were doing the the talent shows and all that sort of thing. We were basically an Oasis tribute band because it was 1997, you know, and... Uh, um, what else was it going to be? <laughs> it, yeah, of course, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, you know, we did covers like Ocean Colour Scene and the Stereophonics were a big band for me. Yeah. Uh, we did a we did a pretty pretty good career for, for children. Um, we, uh, you know, we played... Uh, quite a little, big shows at the Guild Hall in Derry at Halloween and at St. Patrick's Day, you know, uh, headlining these things often, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Seafood Festival in uh, Port New as well was up that direction, you know, we would do quite well. Um, the festival circuit and all, and that was all by the time uh, I was 15. Good. So um, uh, that was kind of how I earned my, you know, earned my money, you know, instead of a paper round or working and, you know, what yeah. you, you know that sort of thing um but it was a, a colorful way to grow up you know and uh yeah, and the pubs yeah. of the pubs of donegal um, indeed but uh, yeah i did that um so play guitar or writing songs since i was 11 years old uh always or the writing things that the, the one consistent through it all then uh about 18 um I started an original band with my best friend, uh, Omar Ben Hassin, um, and uh, a couple of guys from Oma as well, uh, Jared McCrory and Stevie Rafferty. And uh, it was like a prog progressive metal band uh, called Odium Mihilo, uh, because we were super into Tool and King Crimson and Rush and Pink Floyd. Uh, they're all still my, my true loves, you know? Um, yeah. And uh, so we did that for a few years. That was a real learning experience. We made, you know, it was the first time really being in the proper recording studios, uh, you know, making your own records, learning learning that side of things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, re really trying to push something that was original that we believed in, you know. Um, and then uh, that band then changed. And me and Omar went and had a different band called Tapasaya um, that were based in Straban and then in Belfast. Um, we, that's, an un, that's an unusual name. Yes, <laughs> uh, uh, absolutely. Tap. It's a uh, Sanskrit. So uh, we had, uh, you know, uh, at this stage, I had already had a run in. I say a run in. Uh, we were doing a fair bit of psilocybin mushrooms. Um, <laughs> so uh, you know, it had. Uh, uh, so uh, and it, you know, it led this. We sort of took that kind of thing seriously, if you know what I mean. I know we weren't really, you know, hanging around in nightclubs, <laughs> that sort of thing. You know, it was something that we took kind of seriously. So uh, it led us to a book by Baba Ram Das, a really, really famous book called Be Here Now, uh, which is from kind of the 60s hippie generation, you know. And uh, that's where I located the term Tapasaya. I mean, strengthening by fire, which incidentally was the name of the first EP. Um but yeah, that was in Belfast. Um, we are we relocated to Belfast and joined the music scene up there, um, and spent. Well, I lived in Belfast for twelve years, but we were active in the music scene up there for about eight years, I would say nine, eight nine years, and that was a massive learning curve. Yeah. Uh, some of the best times of my life, um, being up there. That was during when 
there was a big boom in Northern Irish music, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> that was uh, when And So I'll Watch You From Afar came to prominence. Yes. Uh, when there was uh, a little solidarity was the big event that they had up in, in Mandela Hall at the time, which has kind of gone down in history now is a, yeah. a really special moment, you know, when the community had come together uh, and supported uh, the local scene. So, uh, and that really felt like being part of a movement, you know, yeah. Yeah. It, really, it really did. And uh, so, uh, yeah, great times uh, as far as that. It, uh, I'm only talking about music. <laughs> great yeah. times musically. Just to and clarify. Then, yeah, absolutely. Because people will be listening going, are you sure you had a good time? Uh, I, 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 I seen you. <laughs> but um, but uh, no, and then, so in, in about tw- or 2010, we started a, nor- a Northern Light, me and Omar, after having a year out uh, of the music scene, we decided we want to start a band that was kind of based on the principle of trying to spread positivity. I know it sounds kind of naff, like, but uh, it was it was very much the intention, you know? Um, yeah. And we were super in the 80s rush at the time. Absolutely obsessed. Uh, my favorite Rush album is Power Windows. Well, that and Moving Pictures. Um, but uh, so it's heavy synths, you know, and, uh, and we were quite influenced by Pendulum and The Prodigy as well. So you're kind of talking like yeah. a mix between these two things, you know? Um, but we had a, a really good run of it for about seven years. Um, we had got got good bit of support from Radio One. Uh, we did a live session for them. Uh, uh, we played on it. All you know, any singles we put out got played on it. Um, we we also managed to do Tenants Vital, uh, oh, uh, the same year as or the same day as the Foo Fighters. Oh, um, okay. But remind me to come back and give out about Dave Grohl, okay? Okay. So oh, good, like that. Good. oh yeah excellent love it love it <laughs> <laughs> come here look it's building drama for the show it's what it's all about we, we can build to it like you know uh, <laughs> but um no as i say we, we uh then from we, our intention was always to make a full album uh with the northern light and uh and we did we started in i think it was 2015 or 2014, um, when we first went down to Neil Calderwood Studio in Manor Park, uh, it's in Tomb, and it's a uh, it's a stunning studio. He's a stunning producer and engineer, uh, one of the best in the business that we have here. And um, and it took us <clears throat> the guts of two years, really. Uh, you know, saving up for studio time, going back and forward. It wasn't like we were just you know able to go down and spend. Yeah. It, it was t- graft, and. Yeah. Uh, and then it got to a point in 2016 when I moved to Scotland, the band pretty much folded. Uh, we still intended to finish the record and put it out. Um, but my life got in the way. And and, uh, and that kind of leads us to where we are now, sort of, you know? Yeah. So on that, on, on that uh, break, and, break and play... Uh, do you want to? You've we're gonna get you to have a play a couple of songs there this evening, or, or you've you've got the titles there. Um, do you want to introduce the first one for us, and uh, we'll we'll play that first of all. Okay, yeah, well, sure. <clears throat> Since we're speaking about a Northern Light, uh, it probably makes sense to play the Northern Light song. Um, and that's a. It was the second single that we released from the album. It's called Paranoia, and uh, from yeah, from the album Kingdoms. Excellent, Stan. Here it comes.
Superb. That's excellent. I love it. Cool. That's, that's that's the sort of thing that I like hearing out in the radio and going like Shazam, who's that band? I want to hear more of that. That's that's down my street. That um cool. you can definitely hear like little little influences there. You're talking about pendulum, you can hear those little bits in there, you know. That's yeah, superb. It's, I uh I watched that video about four or five times today when I was working. And it's stylistically, I love it. I think it's incredible. With obviously the you know the bright background, and then you know like the bits where you're singing, and then sort of masked over the top. Of that is your guitarist, your drummer, you know, and and you singing over the top of them, and it's just it looks it's all put really well together. I I, I don't know if I'm describing really what I mean. Yeah, well. I I, th I think you are. It's um, uh, <laughs> the bass player in the band, Colm Laverty, um is the guy who did the video. Uh, Colm uh, is a full-time filmmaker and, um, and makes music videos as well for many artists. He works quite closely with uh, Melogen, if you know Stevie Scullion. Uh, Melogen is a fantastic artist as well that would be well worth checking out, you know. But I, I, Stephen Scullion I, is a superb artist, but Colm is a, I, a very close friend of, of mine and... Um, uh, a, a tremendous uh, filmmaker, as you can see, that was done. It's a our... very, very professional looking video. Now, I have I, to say. I'm not, I'm not joking. That was done in our practice room in West Belfast, uh, in front of one black sheet with, uh, with, um, with uh, satellites and the rest. And he did everything by editing, it, editing it. He's an absolute wizard. Like um, that's a talent. Oh, I, oh, no doubt. It, it's um. He actually made a film for Stevie for Melogen. Uh Stevie went to uh, Steve Albini to record an album, uh, mm -hmm. obviously from Pixies and Nirvana yeah. fame. Yeah, um, and they brought Colm along to document it, and, oh, wow. uh, and he made a made a short film. Uh, well, I say short, it's like an hour long, you know, um, yeah. about about that experience. I think it's called Document, actually. Um, but um, yeah, uh, uh, the amazing thing for personally. Um, like me and Omar would handle the majority of the the writing of the music, you know. Uh, it was it was kind of where we where we met. Um, Colin would very you know I did of course you know, uh, but um, the visual side of thing was was very much uh, you know his forte, uh, and and from a writer's point of view, conceptually it was just an absolute dream because obviously uh, we'd written a song lyrically. It's about you know the fear and paranoia and you know and 
uh, trying to, to find comfort and sound, you know, and, and, and getting back to the, your community on the dance floor and, and being together and music and that. But he took the idea of paranoia and, you know, obviously ran with it with our heads and what's going on inside your head. And it yeah. just was, ah, uh, I, I, I was so impressed. L- l- mm. Literally took a step outside the box for that one. Like It's, uh, it's, it's uh, something I was we never took it for granted at the time to be honest like we were like because he made the video for kill it as well which was our first single and then uh when i started the heathen choir um he came down and made uh my first music video for the heathen choir as well which is called heathens Very good. um Excellent. you know and uh which is on straban bridge you know the vagina bridge uh the, uh, you know uh, as as a not non Straban native, I don't, don't understand. Is that a reference to something? The uh, vagina bridge. The vagina bridge. Yeah, it, it just looks like a big vagina. Um, uh, the big okay. bridge. Uh, it c- connects the Ballycommon to the head of the town. Um, okay. Maybe it's just me, but you can look in the video. You can check it out. <laughs> I it's, uh, as, as I, I mean, obviously, me being from Derry, I am not aware of that being a, a term or a thing. So it's... I'll be honest, I've never heard that term before. But then again, I've never been to that bridge before either. So, uh, no, come here. It's not like there's a whole load of people around the Booster Bank calling it that. That's well, pretty much just me. Uh, uh, so you're you're welcome. After after this episode, it's the new thing. The vagina bridge. I, I I'm, going, here. I'm going for I'm going for a walk over tomorrow. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, no, it's a good video, and it's great that, as you say, you know, you have a column and, and you don't, because it's it's the kind of thing that you know, if if I was in a band now, I, I'm tr- I'm thinking of what everything, so do. Yeah. And you know, it's great that you don't have to. You know, it's not even that you have to have any ideas. You don't even need to worry about trying to have ideas, because he's already got a million. You know that that they might say, oh, well, this one might go with that, and let's try it. See, to be honest, uh, uh, always there was always ideas. The only problem we had is that we couldn't always afford to pay him. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, and it was his livelihood as well. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. uh, so, as much as he's in the back, you know, and the amount of hours that he spent on that, do you know what yeah. I mean? Is unreal do you know what i mean so but i uh, i suppose that's a, the great the great thing about the collective you know when you when you do put a group together where because omar's role was songwriting but also he was the electronic producer in the band do you know what i mean yes. so um so he did all the demos he made all the click tracks for us to play live with he did you know so i suppose it was a good example of a you know a good unit i so you were obviously you started off with the collective of uh, a northern light and then you progressed on to your solo project i suppose you would call it just under under the alias of uh heathen choir it started because i suppose i'll quickly uh, go over from what happened so i was in scotland and uh i basically a real severe drink problem uh and uh heavy duty mental health issues as heavy duty as you can get really um and in february of 2017 i hit rock bottom and uh and stopped drinking and um within a lock of weeks i had left the relationship that i was in because it was bad for both of us like you know what that yeah. you, know, you tend to find that like you know what i mean and uh i had left the relationship i'd moved from glasgow back to straban for the first time mm-hmm. since i was like 20 and um and i had dyed my hair blonde uh one of those was a bad idea <laughs> but well, um, let, let's let, let, let's just look at that and go. Well, you're still in Strabane. <laughs> I it's still sober. Uh, you well, know, yes. so, uh, but no, still, uh, yeah. The blonde hair was a bad move. But basically, uh, that happened. So that was the big turning point in my life. So what, yeah. when I'm when, when I came home to Strabane, I came home to try and get straight to 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 do things that I had been making excuses for not doing, and you yeah. know, like uh, that was a lot of of where myself sort of disdain came from you know from from not fulfilling potential from you know because i've been doing it since i was 11 years old and and you know mm-hmm. the, the you know but i was also giving myself too hard of a time as i later found out but uh we tend to do that but no when i moved home i moved into my mother's house and uh at that stage i i moved home with a guitar an acoustic guitar a laptop and some clothes and i decided i was going to make an album uh, I didn't have a clue how to produce. I, I'd never recorded anything in my life. Um, so, but I thought that's not an excuse. Um, 
because I was now Mr. No Excuses anymore. You know what I mean? That was my yes. thing. I was like, no, like, I, I didn't have any money. That wasn't an excuse. Uh, so I had a laptop, I had a guitar and a microphone, and I started. And uh, to put myself under pressure, I made an announcement that I was going to release a song every Friday until the album was done. Um, oh. Which I did do. And uh, it was heck. Excellent. <laughs> but, but it was about, you know... Uh, you know, setting yourself standards and targets and, and trying to keep to keep to them, you know, and, and when you're getting sober, when you're going through recovery, that's so important. You know, it's it's massive. Um, you had you had set yourself out your own motivation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's that, yeah, that's as you say, if you didn't have that, then you wouldn't have had any any goals, any any life targets or anything else to keep you going. It's uh, indeed. I, so I suppose for me, what I can it's difficult to sort of get the right to the crux of why you were able to stop. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's very, it's difficult, you know, but for me, it definitely was, I felt like there was something that I was meant to be doing, you know, and, yeah. um, and, and doing to a high level. Uh, so as I say, when I came back, no excuses. And I was sick of, of talking and not doing, I know I, right, yeah. I was kind of surrounded by that all the time. You know what I mean? Like there's people who would say stuff and I would say stuff, but not do anything, you know? And, uh, so that's why when I finished the album, I called it What You Do. The album was called What You Do instead of What You Say. It's what you do, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but it was also uh, about what I do. You know, it's remember what it is you do, man. Don't be getting, you know, don't be, you've got sidetracked by all these things, by your addictions. You got sidetracked by all these things, but what is it you do? Well, what do you yeah. do? And, and I, I knew, that you know? Music. Yeah, man. And uh, so... And, and that was a massive learning curve, putting out that record, you know, and uh, put it in band camp. I got lots of support in Straban, mass amounts of yeah. moral support um, from Andy Davidson in the town, lending me gear to, to get me started going around the bars to be able to make some money. Uh, it was just moving back to Straban was the absolute right move at the right time for me, um, which I wouldn't have believed when I was 18 because I despised it. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh yeah, and then but, just, I, but it just show, it just shows you like that kind of that sense of community in a small town like Straban, because yeah. um, I I know how highly you're held in regard by fellow musicians that I know in Straban from anybody that enjoys going to watch musicians in Straban, and your name is right up there, you know. So just like hearing you talking about that sense of community, people looking out for you, you know, it's there, you know. What I, mean? I, I I walked on the Desi Rallies, and I have to really state like you know when, when you get sober after <laughs> drinking yourself to death nearly uh and you're incredibly vulnerable you know and uh I, incredibly it's like being shot out of the womb again like you know what i mean you're you're so so vulnerable and and i came down and rather than judgment i had chris henry and dicey riley say to me that i could have an put on a night any night i wanted uh a, a songwriter's night a singer's night and it, the kind of support you could only dream about now if i Hen's that guy though. Hen is. is that guy. He is. He is. Yeah, uh, I see it. He's that guy. He's uh, been a good friend for a long time now, and uh, uh, as I say, just the level of support that I got was incredible. You know what I mean? And uh, and I'll never forget it. Um, but yeah, putting out that album was massive. Then when I made the record, um, I wanted to go and play it live. No, me yeah. being me, me being me, I couldn't just make a, a bloody twelve. 12 track acoustic album you know like <laughs> I, that would have been the right thing to do but no yeah. no i i just got i've always had i'd hear bands in my head you know what i mean i hear more instrumentation i hear it's just the way I, I like things like that so when i came to play it live i had to put a band together so what i did uh you know asked a few people i was very lucky that some great great local musicians said yes to doing it and i came up with the name so the heathen choir so it was darren doherty and the heathen choir to start with um mm -hmm. And then slowly but surely, I morphed it into just the Heathen Choir because, of course, I don't really want my name knocking about. Like, that's not uh, not Noel Gallagher and his high flying birds. No, nah, man. Uh, it's, uh, <coughs> I, honestly, I think as well, uh, my one of my favorite things in life, not even writing, is naming things. I love naming things, and um, I love naming my songs. I, I really do. It's like I, I think it's, there's a, like a science to it. I, I, I truly believe that when a song is written there is a correct name for that song. I agree. You agree? Yeah. I agree, 100%. Cool. It's like, it, it's just a matter of whether you can find it or not. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah. I think sometimes, you know, I've named songs and I've known that's not been the right name for that song. Yeah, there was, there was um, I, I don't know if we discussed this in another episode or not, but um, I know we've talked about it before, but, and I can't remember what, what the science behind it was, but Billy Corgan had a mad way of naming the songs. 
but it was like that. it was like there's so many links you know but it made sense once once you knew what it was it made complete yeah. sense but I, I i need i'm gonna have to read this what it is again so i can explain yeah. it properly but but um yeah it was mad because the song the song titles weren't you know as you always expected to be in the chorus or the first line or, or yeah. you know somewhere like that um yeah most of most of their song titles aren't actually in the song at all you can, you can have all the bad names there's certain bands that i don't like i'll not listen to a track because the name, I think that's a terrible name. What are you singing about? And as Kendo was saying, the track title isn't always mentioned. You know, it doesn't have to be yeah. in the song and it doesn't have to be what the song is about or anything like that. But you can get bands that, you know, they'll name the tr- track this. I think that's, why? That's horrible. Why would you do that? Um, there is one that um, Kendo might fall out with me about. This will be interesting. Um, I'm listening. I'm just going to look it up to see if I can find it here. The, the, the title of the song of the debut album, the, the song is called Weenie Beanie. Yeah. First first Foods album. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't like it. I, I won't listen to it because I don't like the title. Fuck uh, but you're, you're, you're weird, but you're, but you're weird like that. It's the same. Like, there was something <laughs> the other day you said like that too, and I was going, that's just a ridiculous reason. I, I, I really don't. I was trying to put off getting stuck in the day of here. Um, but uh, you know, if you're going to team me up like that, uh, oh, oh, that's uh, so let's do it. Uh, no, but uh, I, I no, I, I think the first and second and third Free Fighters albums are fantastic. Uh, I, uh, I really enjoy them. I enjoyed them massively at the time as well. Now, I'm not. I'm not a, a guy of oh, I love the band when they were small. I just I'm not that guy. I, I will fight on behalf of stadium bands uh, I, I, because I believe that's an art in itself. So when a band changes from becoming a garage band, an indie band, and then when they have got millions of fans and they have to go and fill a stadium and write music for that, I believe that's a different art that people just don't value, you know? Yeah. But uh, yeah. in saying that, I, I just died. No, that night uh, we were playing Tenants Vital. What happened was I was really looking forward to seeing the Foo Fighters because I'd never seen them before, you know, and uh, they played three hours and the Foo's were unbelievable. Like it was, uh, it was unreal. Like they sounded class and everything. But what it was is that Dave went on a bit of a, a rant about electronic music, you know, and about, uh, right. about uh, you know, things not being the way they used to be and all. I, I, I can't get on board with that stuff at all because like, you know, he was in Nirvana. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, talk about, being at the cutting age, you know, of, of popular music, like, and then all of a sudden, within a couple of years, suddenly you're the old man, like, you know, what I mean, I just personally, I was like, right, that's weird. I, I, you know, on top of that, then just to to completely back it up, a few weeks later, and I mean, he really went to town on it, like he was, you know, right. like you know, and, and then a few weeks later, he was at the MTV Music Awards playing drums with Dead Mouse. Oh right! Oh shit! <laughs> okay, uh, but for, well, for, first of all, it's not really his form the to have that ramp but i know he has on occasion yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that but yeah that's a bit because he has he's played drums with the prodigy as well and come here don't get me wrong like i'd be okay with the, with all the hypocrisy if he still wrote a good tune do you know mm-hmm. what i mean like I, I i you know but uh i can't nah it's a uh, it, the pretenders the last thing i heard that i thought was class um i'll be honest I, a lot of the thing a lot of the singles i like and the first three albums yeah are, you're really good but like a lot of the stuff i the, the singles are mostly okay. you know they're all right but they're not the as you say like the pretender and all that stuff you know the the stadium fillers and, and all that but yeah the, the recent album there's, there's some good tracks in that recent one but there is the the ones as you say went back to be recording in the garage and all those sorts of stuff and but some there's bits and pieces are all right but the, it wasn't the true form of the band that you Grew up, that I grew up listening to and loved. Yeah, uh, those they, they, first they fall albums. under the trap. The, the <clears> trap that all those type of bands fall into is, you know, they do so well, and that's because they're confined within a smaller space, and then they have to write singles, and and they, a lot of bands do write great singles, but the album's not solid. You know, they, they'll have. Yeah. They'll have I, 10 or 11 I, tracks and two or three yeah. just filler. It's I, honestly, it's not a hell I'm prepared to die on, like you know what I mean. So, it's, yeah. and come here, music's subjective. Everybody, you know, <coughs> yes. loads of people love them. I just say, I just uh, there, <laughs> there's an element of like 
I don't. It's it's a fall from grace. That's the reason, right? It's because yeah. it's because it was held in high esteem. Do you know what I mean? That's what it is. And then it's like I even I really like the documentaries they made. The Sonic Highway was yeah. one. I thought the documentaries were great. I thought the album was awful. Uh, mm. But I, I, but like, do you know? Like, and again, that made me think. It's like okay, so he's. It's like each album has to have a gimmick now. No. You know, it's like yeah. it's like you know every album has to have a gimmick, and you generally tend to find that's when the songs aren't that good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, if you, uh, no, I was going to say for me, if you compare the likes of right Oasis, right now again, I kind of slipped off a bit towards the the last few albums. Too, I wasn't as keen. I wasn't as keen on. However, you look at the first three or four albums and the the albums and the singles, and then obviously the B sides off the singles. Jeez, it's like you know how you know how many B sides do you know by Oasis, and how many B sides do you know by the Foo Fighters? Right. No, no, no. Gallagher was drinking from some sort of magic fountain for about two years, and he wrote all those songs in two years, man. And he, he, he was he wasn't drinking. <laughs> <laughs> they fell into the trap as well. They yeah. started the likes of like your little by little on Lila and you know their stadium songs and and like the, the album. I, I mean, I'll I'll always be a fan. The last album was the only one that I really listened to and I thought, no, I can't. But I'll back all the rest of them all day long for my own personal opinion. Yeah. But but you do hear the decline in it, and it is, it's fallen that trap where they have to write another Don't Look Back in Anger and another Wonder Wall and another Rock and Roll Star, and it's expected of them every time. Yeah. And all the bands, they all fall into it as well. With the Foo Fighters, I seen them once live in 2005, and I avoid never again they see them. <laughs> it was because Dave Grohl would sing a verse, and the verse has four lines in it, and I would sing the first three, and then half of the last line and the second half of the last line they'd be like yeah come on you know and jeering everybody you know getting everybody riled up i remember you i remember you telling me this and it's every every verse of every song and i thought you've done that 10 songs with me fucking leave it alone yeah that being you know, said in the same gig i seen him doing uh everlong acoustic well he had an electric guitar but he played it just <clears> him <throat> on the electric guitar and then after that the rest of the guys went off had a quick drink or smoke or whatever they come back on taylor hawkins come out with a guitar and Dave Grohl played drums and they played one of his own songs. So that was pretty incredible too, to see those two back-to-back -back songs like that. That's He's a, Taylor's a big fan of Rush, um, like any self-respecting drummer, and um, a big fan of Pink Floyd. But no, that's a... Uh, come here, like, hey, that is what it is, you know? Hi. What's that? So it was, but, uh, Let's uh, move along. I say, <laughs> best, best <laughs> band name ever. <laughs> Taylor, uh, Taylor Hawkins and the Cool Kill Writers, the best band name I've ever heard. I love it. Yeah. It's incredible. I know it, it's quite laughable, and Dave Grohl always goes off about it. The Foo Fighters is the worst name of a band ever, and he goes, "I never thought it was going to be successful." But yes, we, we digress again, as we do. Uh, we should, as per usual, we, we should name this the Digression Podcast. Kendall, is that <laughs> the idea? Maybe Something. that'll be for the season two. Um, but yes, we shall. We'll, yeah. we'll move on. Um, as you mentioned, obviously, then you're sort of your solo project um heathen choir we have a song we're going to play for you now do you want to tell us a little bit about it yeah uh, this is a, a song called petrol bombs and songs um and it's the opening track uh, to a live album that i uh, put out last year um yep and a live album recorded in 2020 Excellent. Uh, um I, who, I'm, who not known? I'm not sure if i'm the only one but i might be like i would oh, say i'm a, a, a short a small group but it was um the song itself uh it's, a, it's definitely like the, the, the kind of way I like to start shows. Um, a really, really, really atmospheric builds, um, creating an atmosphere, you know. And uh, the songs, uh, it sort of draws on growing up in uh, this part of the world. Um, it's kind of about the juxtaposition between being proud of where you're from yeah. and not being proud of where you're from. And... Yeah. Uh, and I mean that both in a sense geogra or geographically and personally, you know, um, and uh, and I, you know, there's like, it sort of sits somewhere in that, you know. Yeah. And with that, I mean, that the title, again, I mean, that explains perfectly. Yeah. Um, Thank you. But yes, this is Petrol Bombs and Songs, and here it is. <laughs>
first time I heard your rock and roll. Can't remember where I was or how old. Amongst the thousands of things that were similar about us to the rest of the street, there was this thing. And it could speak. Thank you. Ah, uh, brilliant. I love that. First time I heard that. Loved it. Love it. It's a great song. If I didn't know that it was a live version, I was expecting like sort of halfway through, you know, drums to come in and start getting heavier. I could hear strings. I could hear everything on it. And just, yeah. Had it not been uh, obviously a live version, I would have been expecting that. You have a gorgeous track, so it is. Yeah. It's really, like your writing's very poetic as well and you know everything you explained before the song you know what you can see where that all comes from it's very yeah there's a real real narrative to it like it's you know, listening just sit, close your eyes listen to it beautiful thank you uh, thank you very much it's um hi right, it's uh my it's interesting because when as i mentioned before when when i was in the northern light uh 
we had kind of a mission statement. Do you know what I mean? So like um, we had, you know, criteria. So for example, um, there's a song on Kingdoms called March Into the Light. And when I, when I was writing that song, I, it was, I was in a very bad way. Like I, I was broken, I was broken hearted. And, uh, but because halfway through writing it, when I would, I'd come to the, like the pre-chorus, my, immediately in my mind, I thought, well, if I'm going to use this for a band, the band, it needs to have, it needs to turn, you know, it can't just be sad. Do you know what I mean? So yes. like, uh, so that's why then the chorus went boof, you know what I mean? And it's about, mm-hmm. and that's where that, so that was uh, the criteria I was writing for. Whereas in with the Heathen Choir, with my own thing now, it's, it's a bit more, it's kind of, it's, it's very autobiographical. Um, it's, oh, yeah. um, I'm a absolutely enormous uh, frightened rabbit fan. Um, uh, yeah, I've seen them ten times. Uh, met Scott wow. Richardson, uh, uh, absolutely devastated by, by his death. I mean, absolutely devastated. Um, and uh, and I would have the, I felt very much a kindred spirit there, um, as in somebody who said things that made your blood curdle. Yeah. You know, uh, and I kind of like that moment in the song. You know, if you can say the one thing that you know that maybe you shouldn't, <laughs> you know, what I mean, and yeah, no, uh, you, know. you know, and like uh, that's uh, so the Heathen Choir, yeah, that's kind of what I'm, I'm uh, the road I'm on with that band, you know, yeah, well, Fr- Frightened Rabbit. I, I unfortunately only kind of discovered them somewhat uh, a short time, you know, before, before sadly he, he passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, very, very sad even to read about it. As I said, I'd only just discovered the band I was reading about it. I was like, oh, it's that, like that's so sad. You know, it's such a sad story, you know, that that's happened, you know. Um, and, and for anybody, obviously, it, it, it's it's awful to hear those things. Um, but whenever you kind of have that, obviously, it wasn't a big connection for me, but it was, you know, you, you've made that discovery and there's that sense of connection then. You're sort of going, oh, yeah, it's awful. The, at... <clears throat> The first time I seen them was in Masons upstairs in Derry, upstairs in Masons. Very special night, you know. I, I was I didn't know that much about the band at the time when I went to the gig. I knew a few songs and really liked them, really liked them from the word go, you know. But I seen them ten times, as I say, uh, in different places. I seen them in Glasgow, Galway, uh, lots of places. But something happened at those shows um, that I don't think I'll ever be able to get again. Um, and that was Scott said the truth uh no matter how ugly it was and the thing is there was a victory in saying these things together you know saying i want to die together or mm-hmm. saying i might drown myself tomorrow together because he didn't we were there together singing about it mm-hmm. you know what i mean there was there was a victory and a communion in that and i'm not joking it it got me through a lot of the darkest times of my life that there was this yeah. guy who felt the same you know um and i am far from the only person who felt that way um mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, there's a, a lot of people that uh, he's got a charity set up in his name now. Uh, his music will live on, you know, forever. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, it's, uh, it's it's one of those things for listeners whenever, you know, they're thinking about things like that. I get that. <clears throat> I know what he means. I know what he's thinking or feeling. Mm-hmm. It's like he's singing to me. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of one of those. Oh, 100%. Me, it think, was... You know? Uh, like when the last album came out, I was living in Glasgow and they're a Scottish band. Yeah. And uh, I, I was living in Glasgow and I, I was knee deep in alcoholism at this time. And a lot of that last album, Painting of a Panic Attack, he, he talks about it openly. Like one of the songs called I Wish I Was Sober, you know, and uh, and the first song on the album is called Death Dream. Like uh, it's, it's, he was skitting that he, he wasn't pulling no punches, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, like, I, at the time when the record came out, I was simultaneously comforted, but also worried about him, you know? Yeah. Um, and rightly so, as it proved, you know? Um, yeah, I, I think that was the biggest, the biggest fear was that, like, for the band and the family and, and everything else, friends and so on, was I think everybody kind of knew, but didn't want it to be true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was kind of, that was kind of a thing. It's a... Uh... I know. I, I honestly, I, I, I always in my cover sets or even in my original sets, I always try and play one of the songs. Um, I will for the rest of my life. Um, I've got a chest tattoo right here. Um, uh, that was horrendous to get. Uh, oh man, uh, I did not think that through. But um, uh, and, and you know, it's kind of romantic now. But um, yeah, no, yeah. As I say, to, to bring it back to the, the heathen choir and what I was talking about, uh. 
funnily enough, the, the first song on, on what you do on the album that I wrote when I came home or that I recorded, uh, the first song's called Tiny Steps. And, um, and no joke, but that's, uh, that, that, I wrote that song in Glasgow the day I stopped drinking. And that, in the process of writing that song, I made the promise to myself. Yeah. Like it was, and, it, and it's crazy that I've got a song, <laughs> you know, that yeah. that I can literally sing. That that, that process in <clears throat> my mind happened, like, but it yeah. did, and um, and I'm very grateful for it. But there's a lot of fright and rabbit about that, you know. Like, uh, if you listen to that song, it sort of goes, it, it climaxes in like the repeated line at the end, which you know they would have done quite a lot. Like, I and I have another song that a lot of people like called London Bridge, and that's almost my top of the cap to Scott. You know, what I mean, because. Yeah. He's a Scotsman, and yeah. and uh, you know, and uh, uh, it just uh, it's such a massive impression on my life, you know, and I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, uh, change the subject. Um, something that oh. we, we ask a lot of people to um, is <clears throat> good and bad gigs that you've either been to or you've played at. It's quite an interesting. We we've had quite a few interesting conversations around that. Do you have any particular standouts that either some you've gone to see or that was particularly good or bad or something you've done that have been particularly good or bad? I've been tons of really brilliant gigs. I remember actually, uh, I was telling a story recently. In 2002, um, I was 17, and me and my friends went to Dublin uh, to see Roger Waters from Pink Floyd. And uh, oh. that was the Point Depot at the time. Uh, and it was uh, the In the Flesh tour he was doing in 2002. But I was 17 and a little over-enthusiastic. Right. And a little very drunk on Buckfast. And uh, uh, <laughs> and when I say a, a little over enthusiastic, I'm Massive really not. Uh, uh, essentially, <laughs> the gigs about three songs in, and I'm obviously drawing a lot of attention to myself. And the bouncer grabs me and chucks me out. And I remember the daylight never, you no, know, just cutting under the, oh, like breaking the the facade of the gig and everything. Yes. And mm. uh, and luckily enough, one of my friends, Kieran, had followed me out and i was on the ground making another show of myself like you know <laughs> begging and begging uh to get back in eventually my care my mate kieran talked them and they let me back in for some reason right. Right. and uh and then i i got to stay for the rest of the show it, it was absolute but that wee moment of it being taken away from me yeah uh this is so early oh god i honestly it was i was during mother uh the song mother it was like fourth in the set list or whatever i remember i'll never forget it because it, it was almost the worst night of my life you know what I mean? for for about <laughs> for two or three minutes um and then luckily enough i got back in i was very well behaved from that point on just sang my heart out as far as like per shows and stuff goes i like we've had plenty like i we, we i remember we had, we've had three car accidents on the way to gigs um yeah like you know and uh and then having to go and play the gig um and then all the power going out at the gig um while you're on this was an oma and molly sweeney's i remember um it was like a battle of the bands and the pa and everything fucked up when we were playing uh i I remember i barely remember the gig because i was still shell shocked from being in the car accident like uh and uh (laughs) Uh, everybody was okay. This is why we're allowed to laugh. You know, I mean, it was all yeah. good. Everybody was okay. But I remember, and then they had the audacity to place us second. That's a, it's, it's like uh, the band we interviewed, um, uh, Winona Bleach. Um, they yeah. were chatting about recording their album, and they were chatting. So a, a guy they knew, I can't remember if it was a producer or a mixer or something like this, but he said they went to Portugal, they recorded last year, and they haven't stopped being able to put it out because of COVID <clears> and all that. And they were... T- telling him the story about going to Portugal. And they, he said to them, you can't sell an album without a story. The Winona Bleach, uh, I know I like played with them guys quite a lot um, when they were called R51. Yeah. Um, they, re- they rebranded <clears throat> and that, but I great band. I really, I'm really nice people. Absolutely. They were. And it, just, it was Johnny and Mel, just the, the two nicest people you could uh, ever They really to are, man. I, when we were uh, looking to put out Kingdoms last year when Northern Light, uh, they were, to hooking us up with vinyl recommendations and all like and uh uh just been super nice like will we uh will we get on to your recommended track yeah absolutely absolutely is it is it is it shanna shanna yeah shanna, shanna, hello. it's hello and the tribes featuring shanna is it uh yeah. and the but uh, uh shanna's the, the the one that we're sort of uh promoting uh she's a real talent like and i'm in a real talent but this is a a real beautiful song Our teens don't write diaries anymore I, I, like you're on about song titles boom, boom. there you go 
you know. And here it comes. song isn't it super it super song it's so like sort of unassuming so it is it's it's, it's gorgeous that unassuming is a, a really nice see the confidence you have to have to sing like that uh-huh. uh, uh, uh you know uh, that sort of uh, oh uh, i think it's absolutely incredible it's, it, it's a super alternative to what we because obviously yeah. our these episodes are loaded with lots of guitar music because that's that's the staple of what's around, really. But it's lovely to have something like that. It's quite refreshing to get something a little bit different down again. Yeah, absolutely. And it's um, <clears throat> what's the right way to explain it? The like the, the sound of her vocal. It's it's got that kind of as if it's played back through like a busted stereo, almost kind of vintage uh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, like 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 a gramophone almost you know yeah. getting that crack crackling of a vinyl kind of effect that's produced it's, really yeah. well like it really is it's it, it, it's interesting production like you know it, it it makes you think and it's uh and you're like oh so a few interesting things together and then either you know how delicate her voice is uh, you know and how masterfully she uses it uh 
it's quite something. Like, as I say, I was running a night in Dicey's, like I said, a songwriter's night called Spirit of the Radio. And, um, yeah. and, uh, and Shanna, uh, come on and played it a few times with Finbar, who's also in their band Tramp. And, um, uh, you talk about, you know, making an impression, my goodness, like, uh, uh, you might know uh, Mickey Ferry from Straban as well, who does uh, a radio DJ in Derry and that, and uh, he's blown away as well, big supporter as well. Like, you know, certainly one to watch, no doubt about that. Definitely. Because that, is that, that's the first song, obviously, because that, that's Shanna and that, that's yeah. not her band, that's you were saying no, her band. Is. That's right. I think I think this is just a collaboration, you know, that she's yeah. done. Um, uh, obviously, somebody quite sensible thought, let's get that girl singing on her track. Um, <laughs> absolutely, you know. So uh, I thought it was gorgeous and I thought it was uh, really worth recommending for the show, you know. Right. Definitely. Yep. And, and thank you very much. That's a great recommendation. So it is. And, and that's, again, that's part of what we're doing. That's why we were asking, you know, our guests like yourself and everybody because, you know, we want to play your music as well. You know, we've, couple of great tracks from me this evening plus the one gary recommended to us a few weeks back and then we always that you know it's great then that obviously you know shanna and sort of we want to produce we we wouldn't have known about her probably now this time it might have taken us maybe a few months maybe a couple of years to ever hear of her but the fact that we have it now and it gives us and anybody that's listening say oh well actually hang on a minute yeah you know i'm not from that area i wouldn't have known about that. Let me dig out more of that and, and go and listen more and just expand your horizons. It's, I, I think, uh, you know, what is it? I'm, th- I'm 36 now. I don't know, what, you know, you guys, but, you know, the world changes really quickly. And, uh, and I like, I think it's kind of like my responsibility to keep up to date with it, you know. Um, I have a great fear of being a, an outdated old man. Um, but uh, um, and so like even following, uh, you know, Shanna and, and her band and other uh, younger artists around the country yeah. um, has been really informative for me uh, just to keep up with things, to keep up with the change in, of the tide. Like, you know what I mean? They, they, it's just been really informative and, and on social issues, especially on social issues, to be honest with you, um, because, you know, you know, I like being where the fight is. You know what I mean? I think that's where the that's where the best art comes from, like. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and uh, and the young people are normally flying that flag, aren't they? You know. Yeah. Like like one one of the things, obviously, the, 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 it's in the title, you know, discover music and I. But if 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 you listen to this episode in full when it's done, and and you're walking away listening to, you know, getting a band name or an artist name of somebody you'd never heard before, then you know we've done our, you know, we've kind of done that right. And then if every listener goes away going. Oh, I really like them, or like the, you know, oh, that guest was really good this week, or you know, if they're going away, going, I want to listen to more of that. Then we've kind of spread the word in the right way, you know, it's been done the, the, the right way. Absolutely, know? guys. One of the things that haven't been in in the industry in this country now for a long time. One of the things that I can say is there's an attitude um, of ah, it's a local band, you know, yes, ah, it's a local much. singer. Uh, it's a well. The, the reality is now local bands, local singers. Are as of good a quality as you'll find anywhere, yeah, uh, for, for 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 a variety of reasons. You know, uh, due to advancements in technology, due to advancements of the country, due to you know lots of different things. And uh, I think you what you're doing will, will go a long way to helping that. You know, I mean, uh, people hear the quality that you know Gav and Gary are on with, it and the guys in Winona Bleach and yeah. and Shanna. You know, like uh, uh, Lauren Bird, like uh, you know the quality's all there i think for a lot of people you know they're just used to the staple of oh if they're not on tv you know or if they're not from somewhere yeah. else they, they're not they're not they're not proper <laughs> i think that's what's wrapped up then i believe come here thank you very very much guys honestly thank you so much i wish you all the best wait i really do uh, thanks, thanks darren and like 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 guys, best, well. best of luck with all the yeah. all the music going forward keep it up because uh some sensational stuff there so uh, we'll, we'll get it out there get get more people listening to it and buying your records and uh mm-hmm. hopefully we, hopefully we will get to see you live uh someday soon yeah oh no we, we will don't you worry that's coming that's coming soon we'll, we'll be championing it all day long oh boom baby thank you very much guys i honestly ah, no peace and love all right hey. see you again all the best take care, take care. cheers bye bye ugly guy again hey 100 percent. that's uh nice one we've been just blessed with great guests. I, I think it's <laughs> literally, it's, literally took the words out of my mouth. I, I think it's one of those things too that um, everybody's so passionate about, not not just about their own music, but about the music that you know that basically they're passionate about the things that we're trying to do, and 
they want to get as much music out there and, and they love speaking about music and, and it seems like everybody knows everybody as well. Thanks very much to Darren Doherty for coming along and having a chat with us and playing a couple of cracking songs there. Uh, we're going to play a song from another singer-songwriter called Luke Watterson and this is Cold and Dry. It is. Hush now, baby, and don't say a word. I open up my arms, wrap my body around you. Just breathe and try to catch your breath. You'll never have to let go, let go. Of me, of me, I can't move. Frozen, I was petrified. There was no one to hide. The big scary man was after me. He held me down And then I trapped in you Oh, how I missed you Could you please lay down beside me well, I'm cold And I'm dry And I can't get you off of my mind Cast the tears when you cry Turn your face away, start searching Keep searching for me Searching, keep searching for me. Another great track there this evening, Luke Watterson, County Down native, um, seems to be doing a bit of travelling around, uh, playing his trade. Um, so yeah, over to you, Corks. Uh, great song, again, absolutely. Definitely recommend everybody keep an eye out for him. Um, excellent, so he was. So next time round, we have music from Ferrell's Rory Nellis, and our special guest will be Modern Rome. Looking forward to that. 
yeah, so that is that, that's us pretty much for for this evening. Um, again, thanks to Darren for coming on. Been great having him. Um, we're going to play out this evening with our final track. This is Mob Wife, and the track is called Wrist. Make one of these. Good night. Good night. Thanks for tuning in to our podcast, Discover Music and I. If you don't mind, like, share, subscribe, ding the bell and comment and tell all your friends. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>